Hi, my name is Jacob Rockwitz. This is a demo of the new Web4 module for Drupal 8. Um, this module originally started out as the YAML4 module, and I'll explain that a little further as we go on. But basically, the YAML4 module is getting moved into the Web4 namespace because they both address the same use case. And the use case for the Web4 module for Drupal 8 is to build a form, collect submissions, and download the results. Um, this module is a completely new code base written from the ground up, but is inspired by the Web4 module's user experience, and you'll see a lot of the patterns and design patterns as we navigate through, and also brought in some of the new patterns that were introduced in Drupal 8 for how to manage content. Um, so the place to start, when the module is enabled, you get a contact form that's based off of Drupal's contact module. It's a very simple form, name, email, subject. And I'm just gonna walk through how to edit this form. So here's the elements page, and we're gonna for this demo we're gonna add a company field. So I'm gonna select a text field. Here's the text. I'm gonna add company. And now we're gonna scroll down. I'm gonna expand all. I'm just gonna walk through. You have so these elements are form API render arrays. So you have all the properties available from FAPI, that's Drupal's form API, which you can control how titles are displayed, field prefixes, suffixes. Then you get some add-ons which include input mass. You can control the attributes of the wrapper for the form element. You can control the attributes for the actual element or the input. You can also use set up conditional logic which uses Drupal States API. You can control how the submission information is displayed for this single element. You can control the access to this element. It's a lot of information to digest. The, the module ships with reasonable default settings so you don't have to do any of these settings if you don't want to. They're just available for you. You can also add custom properties. So all the elements in a web form are customizable and extendable. I'm going to hit save. It's going to add the company field to the bottom. I'd like to show you the field in the form. I haven't made a mistake here, but this field should probably be required, be called your company, and move directly under your name. And I want to go back to the edit tab and show you that. And yes, you can do it from this interface and you can go and hit check and hit save and then edit it. But I want to show you how to edit the source for a form. And this is how the this the YAML form module was originally built. It didn't have a user interface. It just had YAML, it, which is the serialized form API render array. And here I'm moving this up to your name. I'm just trying to illustrate it. And now we're going to change the title, your company. And I'm editing YAML. You do have to be familiar. And you can turn this off for users that don't understand YAML. But it's very powerful for developers because you can edit very long forms and change the labels for all the elements on your form in one full swoop. Hit save. Go back. And we've now moved your company up. And you can see that here. Now I'm going to just start walking through all the tabs available. And we're going to go to the test tab, which will allow us to just generate a quick test submission. I'm going to hit send. That just generated a submission, and we'll get to that when we get to the results tab. Moving back to the edit tab, I'm going to walk through these sub tabs. We've done elements, the source, and now we're going to go through the settings. And once again, the Web4 module ships with reasonable default settings. You don't really have to change anything to start, but you have full control over it. I'm going to expand all so we can just walk through. You can set up the title, administrative title. You can disable the saving of results, so you can just have forms that just send emails. You can set a form to be a template, which I'll get to. You can control the URL, the status, all the messages. And you'll see the hints that in the admin settings form for the web form module, you can set default messages, which most of them are reasonable and you can keep as is, but you can control all aspects of your form, including the buttons and even the look and feel of the buttons, including custom classes, styles, and attributes. You can also control the form's behaviors. Um, you can disable client-side validation. You can add warning messages if someone's navigating away from a form and haven't completed it. You can gradually experiment through these, these different settings. You can also add attributes to your form. And then we're going to get to it, but the web form module still supports multi-step forms, which are wizards. And you can control the buttons. Preview, draft, submission limits. I'm kind of going to go through this a lot to digest the confirmation settings, whether it's a page, inline, or a message, or a URL. And this, you can also control who owns it. And this is an interesting one where this just illustrates kind of one of the underlying concepts is you can, this is how the form is posted back. And you can change this to do a post to a remote server. You can build your forms in Drupal and have them 
post the data totally somewhere else. You can also use handlers, which we'll get to, to do that. You can also add custom properties, which allow you to extend forms, and then you can do hook form alters to kind of, you know, be, act on these custom properties. So moving ahead, there's a tab to also inject custom CSS and JavaScript into a single form. This allows you to do additional conditional logic or additional behaviors that you might need or minor adjustments to a form. Um, also with a form, there's an access tab, which this instead of the other access tab, like element I showed, it was for accessing the elements and controlling who can access the elements. This is to control who can access the form. Sorry to start it there. Anyway, you can see you can control by role and user. Now this gets into the concept of handlers. Now this is a contact form, so really what it's doing is the handler is sending emails. And what handlers are are plugins that allow you to route where a submission is going. So you can, you know, submissions automatically go into the database, you can turn that off, but you can have a submission posted to a remote server or a messaging queue. In this case, we're doing email and I'll just show you the form for that. Very simple form, to from, HTML editor for the email. Um, out of the box, the web form module for Drupal 8 now ships and sends HTML emails. You can turn that off, but most email clients support HTML, so it, made, it was made more sense to send HTML by default. Uh, moving to the third party settings tab, I have the Honeypot module installed and enabled, and the web form module now picks up on that and allows you to specify Honeypots for individual forms. You can also go into the admin settings and set up Honeypot for all your forms. Moving on to the results tab, and this is going to be very familiar to people who have used the web form module for Drupal 7. Here's the only result that we've submitted. I'm only going to focus on the new features, which is some filtering. You can also do starring and adding notes to your submission. I'm going to go to the table view, which does show you all the information, all the stuff that's submitted, but you can now also customize it. Um, this is used to kind of generate little custom reports. So for example, I really, I tend to only want to show the elements. So you can check them off and they're bold and you'll see it's going to be adjusted. And this is customized only for this form and you can, you know, set up a little custom report for your users or you can manage it yourself. And then we'll go to the download tab, which should be familiar to everyone. There are some new features. This allows you to basically export submissions as a CSV. Um, you can also save your custom settings for just this forms export. Hit save settings and you can go to the top. And yes, you can clear the results. So moving on, going back up to the main forms page, I want to show you some examples. So there is a web form examples module that you would need to enable and it, it installs eight example forms that you can work with to just get familiar with all the features and functionality. And one of the most important ones is an example of all the elements. It's very hard to go through all these elements, but I'm going to scroll slowly and just talk as we go through basic HTML inputs, HTML5 inputs, co you know, color. I have the CAPTCHA module installed so you can get CAPTCHA onto your forms. There's an email confirmation. Then I start introducing some custom elements. For example, a rating element. You can also have a signature element. Um, you can get HTML editors working. There's a toggle element if you don't like your checkboxes. And then there's a composite element, which is basically an address field. So it's made up of multiple sub-elements. And you can actually write your own custom composite elements if you need some certain behaviors. Um, moving down. File uploads, this is interesting, are right now disabled because I do not have private file, the private files directory enabled. And that is required unless you explicitly say you would like public files to be uploaded. There's a security issue with Drupal where people are uploading files to the public domain and using it as a kind of like CDN. Now moving on, there's option elements. I added a button element. You can also have other available for checkboxes, radios, and select menus, and full Likert support. So you can have any type of Likert questions that you would need. There's table selects and date and time elements entity references, so you can reference any entity in Drupal using an autocomplete checkboxes, radios, or select. No, this is a lot to digest. You can even put in custom inline messages into your form. I can actually show that a little better, moving back up. So there's basic layout example, and this just shows some basic elements. These are the custom inline messages that are available. These are not Drupal alert messages. These are messages you can put into your form to warn people. You can use conditional logic to display a warning or display an error if someone's done something that you need to tell them you can't do it this way. 
And then it just gets into some standard inline form elements, layouts, checkboxes, and radios can be have multi-column support. And we're going to get into some more multi-column support. You can even put your form elements into a table. Um, a more advanced example of layout is the WebForm module ships with Flexbox layout support, which is a multi-column system way to lay out your form elements. And this is responsive, so if we shrunk this down, it would all go into one column, but it gives you the ability to have your really long forms using multiple columns. Generally, I don't recommend more than two or three columns. Um, there are other examples of how conditional logic's working, custom formats, input masks. The most important one that people would like to see is using the wizard. So you can click through and submit your form. I haven't put any data, so the preview is going to be empty, but you can hit apply. Moving back up, so I've just walked you through most of the examples. Um, another feature is there's a web form templates module, and if you enable it, it will install these default templates, and you can customize these templates for your organization, and these are basically starter points. So if you needed to create a job application, you could then, it's a copy of a form. I'm going to actually select this one, just so you can illustrate, you can rename it. In this case, I'll keep it as job application. And it's an example. By the way, this is that warning to tell you you need to set up the private files directory for file uploads, because this job application template has a upload field, manage file. Um, these are very useful. These can help speed up your process. Um, moving on past templates. So, well, actually, to back up big picture, Web forms are now configuration entities. They are not nodes. They are exportable. Um, that makes it easier to move them between one server to another. But the submissions are still content. But to add web forms to your site, for example, in a book or into a menu system, you there is a web form node module that you must enable. And what that does, and it's enabled here, if I hit add content, get a web form content type, which we're familiar with. But the difference is, I'm going to say contact us as an example. You have to select the form. So you built the form externally as kind of like a view, and now you're attaching the view, or in this case, we're attaching the form to this node. You can actually pass in some default data to this form. So you can take fields from this node and put it into your web form. Um, that's a way to kind of do some additional tracking. You can open and close. Tokens are supported everywhere in the module. I'm going to hit Save and Publish, and it's going to illustrate. So this is the contact us node that has the contact form attached to it. So you can, can submit this form. It has a test tab. What's very important to emphasize is um, web forms track where they're submitted from. So you can take a web form. The, the best example would be if you're doing event registration. You could create multiple events and have one registration form that you attach to each event. And when you submit the registration form attached to the event, it tracks the event it's being submitted from. So you don't have to create the form over and over again. You can reuse the forms and you can have this tracking system where it knows which node it's being submitted. And when you go into the node, you can look at the results for only that node. So if I click here, you're actually only going to see no results, even though we have submitted a, a submission from the contact form previously. These are submissions only to this node. I know that's confusing and I will do some more screencasts to further explain it. So following along with nodes, people like to embed these forms as blocks, and I'd like to show it. It's the same pattern. If I go to the block layout, I'm going to add a sidebar second. Web form, place, change the title to be contact us. Similar, you have to select the form. This is using an autocomplete, and you can also set some default data. You can set the visibility. I'm going to put it on every page, and now we have the form on every page of the site. Um, this opens up a lot of possibilities. You can also embed these blocks in panels or paragraphs even. Um, this is the demo of the new web form module for Drupal 8. I'm navigating back to the main page. If you have any questions, please post them in the issue queue. You can also ping me on Twitter. I hope you have a, a fun time working with this new module and enjoy building your sites. Thank you for your time.